So, the sputum definitely differentiates the males from the females. Then the other part to look at is the mouth parts. And I mentioned that the deer tick has very long mouth parts. How many people have been bitten by a deer tick? Yes, would you all agree that it hurts? Does anybody disagree? It hurts and then it itches? Yeah. yeah? Okay, so it really is mouth part related. Uh, how many people have been bitten by a dog tick? Because that's probably the second most common one you see. And do you think that one hurt as much? Do you have any comparison? I feel like I don't look at them enough. I'm just like, Ooh, okay, get them off. All right, well, that's fair enough. So once you know what you're looking right. for, it's really obvious that the dog ticks have really short, small mouth parts and the deer ticks very long. And I think it actually does make a difference in terms of pain. The third tick that we talk about is the Lone Star tick, which also has long mouth parts, and I have not, thankfully, been bitten by one of those, but I'm told those bites are very painful as well, and I wouldn't be surprised when you look at the size of their mouth parts under the scope. So if you look at the little handout that I gave you, the top diagrams were looking at the sputum, the male versus female, and then the bottom diagrams show a close-up of the mouth parts, and so, again, depending on how much detail you do or don't want to get into, the idea is that all ticks have a hypostone, and that's kind of like a drill bit or a straw. It's basically like a drill bit that's hollow in the middle. And so it's what's actually burrowing into the skin, and then it's staying in there. And then the palps on either side of the hypostone, the palps are steadying the hypostone to help the tick stay attached. So if you think of it in terms of the hypostome is like teeth, and then the palps are like your lips, so when you open your mouth, open your lips, then you can see your teeth. It's the same way with the tits. If they die with their mouths open, you can see the hypostome really well. And otherwise, if they die with their mouths closed, the palps are covering the hypostome, and you don't see them separately. You just see them as the individual, you know, just see the mouth parts collectively. Regardless, it doesn't matter if you are identifying those individual features. It's really just a question of length. It's the really short stubby mouth part versus the longer mouth part. That's what helps you differentiate the species.